Today we'll be taking a tour of my most important bookshelf, the trash can. I did not know how to start this video. <laughs> Friends and enemies, welcome to Horror and Inconvenience, where things are usually spooky and always weird. Today, it is time for the Garbogist Trashy Books tag. I want to thank Ollie of Criminali, the creator of the event, for tagging me in this. Um, at least I think I want to thank him, because I wasn't going to do Garbogist, and now I've gone down the rabbit hole, and I'm all in. So, let's begin. Question one. Trashy books are often dismissed by the critics. What's a book which is regarded as trash, which you think has artistic value? Listen. Meg Cabot raised me, and... The Princess Diaries might not have been the series that I deserved, but they were the series that I needed. Um, a lot of people have familiarity with the movie, which is delightful, starring Anne Hathaway and Julie Andrews. Um, but it has very little in common with the book series, which is humorous, cynical. Um, the characters are sort of a rogues gallery. The grandmother character played with such grace by Julie Andrews is kind of a rich old goblin in the books. And, uh, you know, Mia and her friends are flawed teenagers and they go through normal teenage things to the point where the involvement of the monarchy is almost a running joke, especially later in the series. Um, because of course, Mia is a left-leaning American student. She kind of objects to the concept of monarchy. Very funny. Anyway, um, these books deal with a lot of sexual material. Um, they include a lot of pop culture references, and they do have a lot of shameless... Um, indulging of teenage girls' fantasies, all of that, um, which was all very important. I mean, it was formative for me growing up to see what slightly older girls were thinking about and theoretically doing. Um, kind of gave me an idea for the shape of what to expect. I mean, there are problems, obviously, it's very heteronormative, but these kinds of books are important to young teenagers. And um, being four teenage girls, pretty much, especially in this time period, the early 2000s, when young adult literature had not yet received any of the acclaim or attention that it has now, um, they were pretty much universally treated as trash. And Meg Cabot, of course, is primarily a romance writer, so that did not help anything. Uh, but these books mattered to me. The characterization was strong. Um, they were trashy, but they had a lot of value in forming my expectations of the social world and also my sense of humor. Um, Plus, I bet you didn't know that Mia has a little brother named Rocky in these books after the Rocky Horror Picture Show. You're welcome for that. Uh, but yeah, I couldn't let this go by without offering a piece of teenage girl literature as a trash book worth defending. Question two. Critics often love books with extreme or challenging content. Which critically praised book did you think was trash? That would be Disgrace by J.M. Kutsia. 
Oh my god. I hate this book. I read this book for a class in college on the literature of oppression and resistance. And a lot of the books we read and discussed in that um, class became absolute favorites of mine, like Toni Morrison's Beloved or Arundhati Roy's The God of Small Things. Truly wonderful books. But then we came to this one. And... I just remember being absolutely baffled. So I, I know this book gets discussed a little bit on this corner of booktube because it definitely qualifies to a lot of people as a disturbing book. Um, but in case you don't know, Disgrace is basically uh, the story of a white South African man who he's a professor and he loses his job for sleeping with a student. And then he moves out to his estranged lesbian daughter's farm. The farm is attacked. And basically it's just the story of a downward spiral of a privileged man losing everything. Which in itself is not a bad premise. The problem is that the book is utterly empathetic to the main character's disgusting point of view. And I don't mean empathetic, but disapproving. The way you might tell a story from a villainous character's perspective um, in order to sort of understand that way of thinking. No, the book thinks like the character in a lot of ways. It's absolutely disgusting. I mean, for instance, the student he sleeps with, because the narrative is from his point of view, is portrayed as somehow seducing him when it's very clearly a sexual assault scene and uh, that sort of thing. The narrative takes this character's excuses into its own framework in a way that goes beyond uncomfortable and right into the garbage bin for me. I vividly remember um, being sitting outside a coffee shop with my friend and just ranting about how much I hated this book and how baffled I was that a professor I respected so much would choose to have us read this. Um, and in what context, I couldn't imagine in what context um, she thought this was useful to us. And that very professor came up walking up behind me and she, she was shocked, but she said, well, at least you're talking about it. Which is a reaction I deeply respect, although I do not deeply respect her choice to include this book in the syllabus because it is pure garbage. It's like, I don't even have a simile for it. I think what really bothers me, and I'm going to spoil it, so if you care, skip ahead a little bit, um, but when his daughter's farm is attacked, she herself is sexually assaulted, and it's almost framed as, like, one woman's assault is punishment to this man for the assault he committed, uh, it's very much a, you know, I support women's rights because I myself have a daughter uh, kind of framework. It's, it's disgusting. And the disgust he has for lesbians is particularly galling. It's, it's a bad book. It's bad, it's trashy, and not the fun kind of trash. Zero stars. Question three. Not everyone approves of trashy books. What's a book you wouldn't read in public? Well, no such thing, really. But um, I don't have a lot of shame. But there was one book that I was embarrassed when somebody commented on my reading it in public, which was um, the manga series Citrus. Uh, 
So I guess that counts. I would read it in public, but accepting the potential for embarrassment. And Citrus, by the way, is pure trash. A lot of fun, but no redeeming qualities. Question four. Books about killer animals are almost always trashy. What animal would you least like to be attacked by? Now, there have been some pretty creative answers to this already on this tag. Um, but after thinking on this for a moment, it occurred to me that probably... If, if we're talking, like, horror book-style death by animal attack, um, the animal that I would least like to cause my death would be a sloth, because I am very impatient. Question five. Trashy books often flourish in specific genres. What's your favorite trashy subgenre? <clears throat> Vampire fiction. Question six. Famous people love to milk their fans by publishing books. Which celebrity would you like to read a trashy novel by? When I first heard this question, an answer came to me fully formed like a lightning strike from the gods. I would love to read a trashy novel written by Ian McKellen. Sir Ian, start writing. I'm waiting. Question seven. Trashy books have the best covers. Which book on your shelves has the trashiest cover? This was a challenging one for me because there were a lot of good options. And I definitely considered... Um, using another early 2000s um, teen book. But ultimately, I think this trash award goes to this book that not only has a trashy cover, but has a trashy cover that contradicts the material inside. And that would be this cover of Nell Gwynn, Royal Mistress by John H. Wilson. Um, I mean, they're selling this. They're selling this as if it's, like, softcore pornography. Oh, look at this. Oh, that's just the washi tape that I used to close it. See, it's got a rat because I love trash animals. Uh, but I've read this book a couple of times because I used it in academic research. It's a nonfiction biography with with a lot of focus on the history and context of Restoration Era London. So, you know, it's, I mean, it's an academic biography and it looks like this. I bet it was a marketing coup though. Question eight. Trashy books often contain adult themes. What's a book you read before you were old enough to? Well, I'm not a huge believer in the concept of not being old enough to read something. Uh, I suppose if I had read something super violent when I was very young, that would have been my answer. But I didn't have enough of an interest in violent stories to get myself into that kind of trouble when I was younger. That came much later. Um, so... I guess I'm going to answer with a musical here because as a family, we always listen to the same music in the car. And when I was about eight, I was introduced to the musical Les Miserables, which there is a lot of sex work in that story. And I don't know how thoroughly an eight-year-old needs to have the concept and history of sex work explained to them. Um, wonderful show. I would defend it with my life, but I might have been a little young. Finally, question nine. If you were a character in a shifter romance, what creature would you want you 
or your partner to shift into? I decided to answer both the you and the partner question, um, because if I were a shifter, I would certainly be a bat shifter, because I'd be a vampire in any given supernatural world that I was involved in. Um, however, if I had to think of an animal shifter that it would encapsulate my type in a partner, um, and... I ran this by my friend and got laughed at because I am a horse girl. I would like to date a horse shifter because I feel like horses have personality traits that I find very appealing in terms of um, being very independent and self-sufficient, yet at the same time social and affectionate. Um, it's a wonderful balance. I always found it very easy to build relationships with horses um, and so maybe a horse shifter would be a little easier to approach than just a straight up human. Anyway, there was a tenth question on this but it was just to tag people and almost everybody I know on here has already been tagged in this. Um, so if you're watching and you somehow haven't yet been tagged in this, please consider yourself tagged. This is so much fun, and the more content we have on Garb August, the better. Um, it's going to be a party. All right, thanks for watching, and thanks again, Ollie. This was a lot of fun.